Welcome everyone. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to go over why I believe real estate is one of the single best investments you can make even in today's market conditions. My name is Jeremy Williams with the Bannock Real Estate Group and in the last 20 years we've been involved in over a thousand real estate transactions, purchase rentals for ourselves, and we're actually even currently developing property. When I first got started in 2003 the market conditions were very similar to what we see today. Rates were just over 6%, low inventory homes, and some were selling fast. Now, of course, by 2007, 2008, uh, that became the change, and for very different reasons what we're experiencing today. But when the recession hit, I was able to get a contract from Fannie Mae, and we were in charge of selling a lot of foreclosure properties in the area. This experience opened my eyes to the opportunities that most people didn't see. While most people were making decisions out of fear, there was a small group of people that were making them on purpose. I realized during these different markets, there's a lot of opportunities in the market, even if you're, as long as you're willing to adjust how you're looking at that situation. The reason I put together this class is to help open our eyes and expand our view of real estate. Do you ever wonder why some people um, seem to be living the life and others are just getting by? Or ask yourself, what are they doing and why can't that be me? What about this one? Well, they don't seem very smart. It's just not fair. Well, the answer is it can be you. So today we're going to talk about the advantages of buying your personal home with a focus on appreciation, equity buildup, and taxes. I think most of us agree that we know real estate's a good investment, but what does that actually mean? So we're going to touch on the investment side of real estate as well. Now, during this class, I might be using terms that don't make sense. Sometimes I just simply don't make sense. And I want to encourage you that there's no stupid or ridiculous questions. So if you're thinking about it, just get it out and we can make the class a little bit more interactive. And I do want to express, of course, the numbers that we go over and the results are situational. They might vary compared to uh, the results that you're getting. I am not a lender. So when we talk about payments, we talk about interest rates, it's going to be important just to get a concept out of it. But when it comes to how this might actually be implemented to you, a lender is the one who's going to be able to bring those numbers together. Now, it's also important that the results may vary. This is real estate investing for that matter. So, uh, of course, if you have to sell when the real estate market's down, it's not going to be as good investment that if you're selling when it's up. However, my take is we're talking about personal properties today and you need a place to live. So let's take all these things into consideration and see how real estate ownership may affect you and your situation. So let's get started. Most of us, when we think about our personal home, we think about a warm, safe place to create memories. Today, we're going to expand that vision to include building wealth with your personal home and investment real estate. So first, I'll go over, like, what is wealth? One of my favorite definitions is from a mentor who owns real estate all over the country. Ben Kinney describes wealth as being able to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want. To me, it kind of sounds like freedom. Imagine having passive income to supplement or replace your job. What would that do for you? In the last 20 years, I realized that everybody has different goals and risk tolerances. Today, we're going to go start small with just your personal home and go from there. At the end of the day, uh, there's one hard truth. Everyone has to live somewhere. You're either building wealth for yourself or you're building it for somebody else. Which side do you choose? So let's expand on wealth through home ownership. At the Bannock Real Estate Group, of course, we're passionate about home ownership because we believe in all the opportunities that it creates for the homeowner. As an example, there was a study done by the U.S. Census a few years ago that said the average renter had a net worth of $5,000, while surprisingly, the average homeowner had a net worth of over $230,000. And I believe if that census was done today, those numbers would even be more dramatic. The reason is there's a lot of incentives for home ownership through the government. As an example, if you're a primary resident and you're selling your property as a single person, up to $250,000 $250, gain is tax-free, tax-free money back to you. And if you're a married couple, up to $500,000 gain is tax-free. So I could go on and on about the incentives, but it's important to understand the different concepts that start creating value in home ownership that you're not going to experience as a renter. So one of the most important concepts we'll have to understand to understand the benefits of home ownership is what we call compounding. Compounding is simply the process where interest is cr credited to an existing principal amount as well as interest already paid. So let's let's try to break that down. 
if you uh, purchase something for $100,000 and it gained 5% interest, after the first year you'd have $105,000. Now the next year, if you gain the same 5% interest, you'd have $110,250 because you gained interest on the principal plus the interest you've already gained the first year. So this is the compounding effect of investments. It starts out really slow and gets exponentially better every year. So an example that I like to use um, is for compound is what I call the penny example. It basically says if you had one penny and you doubled it every day, after a 30-year time period, how much money would you have? So day one, you have one penny, then you have two pennies, then you have four pennies, and so forth. By day 12, you still only have a whopping $12 in your bank account. And even by day 19, you still only have 5,242, but it's starting to become some real money. Anyone guess how much money you'd have after 30 days? How about $5,368,709.12? That is the power that is the power of compounding. You can see how you started out small and over time when you're compounding bigger and bigger numbers, it starts growing quick. I actually heard Warren Buffman speak once and he was talking about the power of compounding. And he mentioned that if he had put $16,000 into a standard S&P fund um, when he was about 16, any guesses how much money it would be? And now, of course, he's like older than time itself, but it was something like $52 million because it would just keep compounding more, a bigger and bigger, bigger number over time. The concepts we're going to talk about today embraces two compounding effects that you can't, I don't think you find in any other type of investment. Compounding appreciation, but also compounding debt reduction. So we're going to, let's take another look and see how these can affect your investment. The three main concepts we're going to go over today are appreciation, principal reduction, or like I sometimes like to call it equity buildup, and the tax benefits of owning your own, own home. So let's get into it. Okay, let's first talk about appreciation. Over the last 30 years, average appreciation on a single family house across America has been 4%. Some years it's been less and sometimes even the negatives and some years it's much, much higher. For example, over the last couple of years, Missoula has seen appreciation of 29%, 25%, and last year we still saw 6% appreciation. Let's think about that for a moment. If you own a home that was $500,000 and appreciated 29%, that's over a $145,000 gain you got equity that you got in that home just for that one year. For the sake of this class, we're going to use 4% appreciation. If it's higher, the benefits are even greater. Um, one of the things that we get all the time is people call in their office on a weekly basis and say, hey, how are people able to buy houses in this market? Well, I bet if you had $145,000 gained when you sell your house, it's going to make it a little bit easier and give you more money to put down on the next house to make it more affordable. People are taking their appreciation from one home and putting it to the next. It's not because they've made more money or all of a sudden have an inheritance or possibly won the lottery. But here's my biggest concern. People that are currently renting the homes, as homes continue to go up in value, it's going to be harder and harder for renters to get in the game. And you can see the difference that that's making the equity and, and the money that a homeowner has compared to what a renter has is becoming further and further apart. I once heard an old wise tale says, hey, when's the best time to plant a cherry tree? Well, the answer is 100 years ago. But when's the second time? Best time? Today. So let's get started. So let's see how this looks as an investment. Again, for this example, we're going to use $500,000 home at a 30-year average of 4% appreciation. If the market's able to sustain 4% return, you can see how the equity compounds each year. Now remember the penny example. It starts out slow and grows exponentially faster over time. Same here. So you start out $500,000, then you get $20,000 after the first year, $20,800, and then $21,632. And by year three, you have almost $62,000 of equity in your home if the market is able to sustain that 4% average appreciation. So let's compare that to other investments. Now, if you're investing in real estate, by rule of thumb, you need $100,000 to buy $500,000 of real estate. Now, what other investment can you put down $100,000 and get appreciation on a $500,000 asset? 
If the market sustained 4% appreciation, you would gain $20,000 or 20% return on your original uh, $100,000 investment. If you're investing in stocks, for example, you'd have the same risk with market conditions, but you'd have to invest $100,000. And at that time, your investment still is worth only $100,000. And if you got that same rate of return, you'd only have $4,000 uh, return on that. I can imagine um, that some of you are thinking, but Jeremy, I don't have that kind of money. Well, the good news is you don't need that much money if you're buying a personal residence. As a, a personal residence, you might be able to buy a home for as little as three and a half, five percent down. In some cases, zero percent down. Let's use the same example if you had five percent down. So you put twenty-five thousand dollars down to buy a five hundred thousand dollar home. You, if you get at least four percent appreciation, you'd be getting an eighty percent rate of return on your money that you put down. Uh, I have examples of people who have been able to acquire down payments even if they're short on savings. So please reach out to us for some different creative ideas of how you can acquire a down payment if you don't have one or required to get one through your loan. So we've talked about the compounding effect of appreciation. Next is something that I don't hear as many people talking about when buying real estate, and that's the compounding effect of debt reduction, or again, like I like to call it, equity buildup. When a payment's made on the home, a portion of that payment goes towards interest on the borrowed money and a portion goes towards paying down the principal or the original debt. Each month you make a payment, it's like the penny example, the more and more it goes towards paying down the principal and builds up over time. So in our example, uh, we're using a $500,000 home purchased at 6.8% interest. So the first month about $425 goes towards um, paying down the principal. Then at 427, third month 430, and so on. You can see this trend. About each month, about three dollars more goes towards the compounding effect of paying down your debt. The longer you own the home, the faster you grow, you pay it back. In the first year of owning a home, your debt would be paid down about five thousand dollars. Using the compounding effect, by year five, you're paying down about seven thousand three hundred and forty-eight dollars per year. Now that debt adds about another 5% return on your original investment, even if the appreciation is zero. So it helps safeguard you from market conditions over time. The longer you own their home, the less vulnerable you'll be to market changes and the lower the chance of being upside down if you have to sell during a down market. Now here's the good news. Is that benefit exists no matter who's making your payment? If you rent your home, the renter's paying down the home for you. Remember, someone's always getting wealthy over time. It's whether you're doing it for yourself or you're doing it for somebody else. Another seldom talked about benefit of home ownership is the tax benefit of your personal residence. In our example, uh, if you were to make $33,000 of interest payments and you were say in a 30% tax bracket, you realize about $10,000 in your tax savings. Uh, if we apply that to the original investment of $100,000, it'd be like another 10% gain on your money. Of course, you should always consult with your tax professional for more personal tax advice to see how this uh, affects you. But let's look at the whole picture. Under the assumptions we discussed, you'd see a $20,000 appreciation, principal reduction of almost $5,000, and just over $10,000 uh, tax benefit for a total earnings or savings of just over $35,000. In total, you begin about a 35% return on your investment for the first year if you put $100,000 down. If you put $25,000 as an owner-occupant, you get 140% return. I and mean, you'd have to put over $350,000 cash at 10% return to get that same return in the stock market. This is why homes are still selling at a high, inch, even with a high interest rate at high prices. People are seeing 35% returns on their homes, even with conservative numbers. If you rent, your benefit is zero. The question should be, could you afford not to buy a home? Now, there are homes that are less expensive and you may have to sell on your first time home. However, every time you rent, you are falling further and further behind at some point. It's going to be hard for you to make enough income to possibly catch up when it comes to prices and rates. So we talked about the value of home ownership and how important it is to own the house that you're in. Now we want to talk just a little bit about how people are using these tools as an investment strategy. 
Now, what we're seeing a lot of people do in our marketplace is they are taking their home that they already own and they're buying another house as a primary residence, keeping the house that they were in before and renting it out. And that's part of the reason why they're so low inventory in this market, but it's a way that they can build a portfolio by buying primary residences over and over again. Now, of course, you have a couple options. You can um, also, if you own a house, you can refinance, take some missed savings, or sometimes per, you know, cash out an investment account to purchase a rental property or a primary residence. But the most popular one right now, purchase a house, live in it for a little while, purchase another primary residence, and then rent out the previous one. Now, if you are somebody that's looking to break out of just owning your own personal house and get an investment portion of real estate, there's some other additional benefits that come along with that. Just to not really get into it too deep, but there's a depreciation that may help lower your income tax. There's right off many of the expenses for things you're buying for that property. And then of course, hopefully you have some additional income to offset those expenses. So not only do you have possible appreciation, debt buy down, tax advantages, but also possible additional cash flow up and above what you pay for your mortgage payment each month so we can expand on that but it brings together a, even a bigger picture of the benefits of that property just a couple other things to think about when you're getting into the investment real estate compared to just owning your personal residence. When you go to sell an investment property, it's going to be a little bit different than what we talked about earlier, the advantage of selling a personal re residence and as a single person uh, deferring up to $250,000 in tax-free money and as a married couple, $500,000 in tax-free money. When you sell an investment property, you may be subject to what we call capital gains tax. And capital gains tax is going to be charged on how much money you have into the property compared to what you sold it for. So you've got a couple different options. You can sell it and just pay the tax and, and keep the money. You can possibly do what we call a 1031 exchange where you can exchange those proceeds into another like kind property and defer that capital gains tax down the road. Or sometimes people will hold it for their entire lifetime and maybe take money out of it tax free, but never actually pay off that property because when you pass away, you're going to get a new step up basis um, to today's current value for what's going to be calculated towards capital gains tax. So there's a lot of information that we could get into there, but I just want to go over some of the basic concepts so we have some baseline to think about. Thank you for taking the time to go over this video with us to get some of the basic concepts of home ownership and a little bit into investment real estate and why we feel home ownership is one of the best things you could do in your life and how we can expand that to create a retirement and wealth out of home ownership as well. If you have any questions, reach out to us. Myself, my phone number's on here. You can also call myself, 406-531-1519. And let's get together with a lender and a tax consultant to see how we can create the best situation for you. We also sit down with a lot of people to help consult with, okay, maybe you're not necessarily ready for home ownership, but how could we get you there in the future? What are the steps that you're gonna wanna think about that you can get you in a position to get into home ownership sooner than later. And then ask us about some of our properties. We have a lot of properties coming to market that fits some of this criteria that we've gone over today. So we look forward to hearing from you again. It's 406-531-1519 and look forward to talking to you soon.